Hey everyone, doing a little open heart surgery here on the Elgu Jupiter, replacing the screen. Elgu passed over a new screen. So part of the process is removing the bottom panels. They just unscrew. And now I'm gonna proceed with trying to replace that screen in there. My camera will continue to autofocus for me. So there is on the back side, it's gonna be really hard for me to get an angle of, but there's a bracket here on each of the corners here for this electronic component component of the screen that I need to unbolt here. Now that I've removed the bolt from the board there, I'm gonna remove the bolts that are holding the screen in place. Very carefully removing the ribbon cable here. That was extremely easy. Here is my new screen. So it's got the protective film on there. I'll remove that after I install it. There is one on the bottom side that I'm going to Remove. It'll just be easier to take it off now before I before I get into the printer. I've also put the cable in as well with the electronic side of that going towards the board, blue side facing out, and then clamp that in. So before I bolt up the sides, I've just powered on the unit just so I could do a quick test here. Screen looks good. What's nice about this is uh, the screen comes pre-taped to this connection thing. So it's as plug and play as possible. So you just unscrew these, take out the old screen, plug in the new screen, bolt it back in, and it's basically good to go. There's no retaping or anything like that, which is awesome. There is 24 minutes left on this print and it's completely frozen. And I'm 99% sure it's this USB stick. I knew I should have swapped out these USB sticks with my own that I use. Elgu, love you guys. Absolutely love you guys. Make wonderful machines. Stop using these USB sticks, please. This was six hours in. There was 24 minutes left to go on finishing this print. Oh, that is painful. And it was a really large build plate full of resin there that I've now uh, that I've now wasted. That's, uh, that's a good time. Uh, so I'm probably going to restart this and attempt it again. So I've got all the prints cleaned up and the great news is it does look like the screen replacement fixed my printing issues. I now have a much longer print that I'm gonna be letting run overnight here and sh hopefully showing you here at the end of this video. It's gonna be a much larger print that I'm running right here. But this was a about a six and a half hour print. I did have the USB stick issue there, but that aside, I still have a number of prints that I was able to complete. And again, happy to say, regardless of where the prints were on the build plate, they all printed properly. There was none of the crazy line artifacts that I was seeing with the original set of prints that I was printing on the machine. So here I'm showing a side-by-side -side of the previous prints along with the latest prints that I've run on the machine. And I'm really happy with the results that I'm seeing now on these particular prints. All of these files were pre-supported, which made it a lot easier for me to just get the build plate up and running and printing. And it was at the 75 millimeter scale for most of the prints here. So I'm gonna let this run overnight and then we'll check back in once this finishes and see what the results of this really long print looks like. And by the way, I have the resin auto feeder all hooked up and feeding in. So it's gonna be continually feeding in resin while I'm sleeping overnight. And here are our prints. This was a 13 hour print off of the Jupiter. I maximized this Venom bust by the Creature Armory as large as I could without having to slice it up to fit on that build plate. Obviously, I would have liked to have fit this, you know, to fill the entire thing, but unfortunately, it would have just ended up having to cut off bits and pieces of it. It's still a good bit larger than I'd actually be able to fit on the Saturn build plate. And unfortunately, I did run into a few print issues, but overall, the print quality looks amazing. And that's the most important thing for me here is that the actual screen replacement appears to have completely resolved the layer line issues that I was previously seeing on the machine. So when I was printing with this, one of the back corners ended up lifting away from the build plate, which just means I probably need to go back and re-level that build plate. And then I have a few areas where it looks like air pockets got caught in there, or I just didn't have it properly supported like here under the chin. 
and I'm actually seeing the same exact issue on the same file on the smaller version of that Venom bust where right under the chin, I've got a little layer separation there. But overall, print quality looks so dang good off of this machine. On that build plate, I also printed one of Nico Industries' latest helmets, much smaller than life size. This is the Ultron helmet from the Marvel What If television series. This looks really cool and again, really clean. The reason why I went with this one because there was lots of curved pieces and we'd be able to easily see if there were any of those layer line issues and it's super clean. The other nice thing is that I was able to fit all of these into the Mercury X wash and cure station just barely able to fit those in there. I will be doing a full build volume test print here, hopefully starting later today, and I'll be sharing that over on social medias. If you're not already following me on TikTok and Instagram and all those things, I'll have links down below to that. I wanted to say a huge thank you to Elgu again for sending this over and sponsoring today's video. If you are interested in the Jupiter as of posting this video, I think there's like two days left to still back the machine. And just as a reminder, in case you didn't see my previous video, I have a pre-production beta machine here, which is why I might have run into that screen issue. Not anything that I would be particularly concerned of if you decide to back this over on Kickstarter. And by the way, that screen replacement, if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, one being the easiest, 10 being the most difficult, I would probably give it about a two or three. It was almost as plug and play as you're gonna get with these types of machines, where basically I spent most of the time just unbolting the side panels and then unplugging a cable and plugging in the new screen, plugging in the cable and rebolting everything back together. Really straightforward and simple. Well, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me print on the Jupiter. I'm open to suggestions as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.